Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Come to you from the great Pacific Northwest. We truly serve an awesome God, a God who knows all things, and a God who walks beside us to help us through those things that we have to endure. Praise God for that. Our word of encouragement comes from John 15, starting at verse 18. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember the words I spoke to you. No servant is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. Now, however, they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father as well. If I had not done among them what no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen miracles, and yet they have hated both me and my father. But this is to fulfill what is written in their law. They hated me without reason. When the counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the father, the spirit of truth, who goes out from the father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. Now, I know on the surface, this may not sound like words of encouragement. Jesus obviously talking uh, to his disciples about the fact that, hey, the people, world's going to hate you. If the world doesn't believe in me, they're not going to believe in you. If they're against me, they're not going to, they're going to be against you. And we find that's true even in our world today. We find that people are out there really hating on Christians and really hating on things that have anything to do with Christianity. Uh, more and more in our, our country, we're losing um, more of the freedoms designed by our, by our forefathers that would say, hey, anybody can believe what they want and we'll celebrate those freedoms uh, to believe to this idea that, hey, if you don't believe what I believe, then, then you're out, then you're not okay, then, then, then we hate you. And we see that over and over again in our media. Now, I got to be honest, I don't believe that's the truth of America. I believe that most of the American population is open to people believing what they want to believe and people believing in God and those type of things. I think it's it's that far left, if you will, that, that wants to destroy everything. Uh, but the reality is, is that God has told us this was happening. God has told us this is the way it is. It came from Jesus himself, that if, we, if people don't love him, they won't love us if we're part of his kingdom. The encouragement I want to share with you today is if you're struggling somewhere uh, in, in, in your life, maybe it's with co-workers, maybe it's with neighbors, maybe it's with just the person down the street, let's remember that their hate is not for us, but for God who is in us. Their, 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 their upset, their perspective, their whatever is not just about us, it's about the God who sent us. We don't have to own it. If we are living our best for God, if we're doing our best for God, then God will take care of it. Praise God, vengeance is not ours, but his. Praise God, he will take care of it. And praise God that sometimes people are open to hearing God. And when they come against us and we don't resist, but we just love them back, then God can use that to open their hearts. Too often today, we want to fight back. And the truth is, since the beginning, mankind has wanted to fight back against evil. From the beginning, we wanted to exert our power and our resources to, to overcome. And yet God is always about loving people. God is always about showing his love, even in the face of opposition. And as we think about Easter this week, and we think of all that Christ went through during this holy week, we can see that, that Christ could have easily overcame, overtaken, overpowered those who were against him, and yet he didn't. Why? Because it wasn't God's will. Because God had a greater plan. Folks, God has a greater plan for you. We may not know what it is. We may not understand what's going on, but God has a plan greater than we can understand that he will use to glorify himself and to build his kingdom. And we are lucky enough to be a part of it. Praise God for that. Father God, thank you for your ways. Thank you, oh God, that even when we don't understand, even when we're hurting, even when people come against us, that you are there, that your Holy Spirit walks beside us, that your Holy Spirit protects us and keeps us safe, that your Holy Spirit leads the way, even in the midst of persecution. Father, we live in a tough world today, uh, not unlike sometimes of the past, and yet we believe in your revival. We believe that your plan is still reconciliation, that your plan is still to draw your people, your creation back to yourself. Father, may we be a part of that. Father, give us your eyes and your wisdom to see as the people come against us that are coming against you. 
And may we find a way to love them uh, through your Holy Spirit. Father, thank you for all that you're about to do. Father, please be with those who are hurting today. Those whose uh, aversion to you comes from sickness or hurt or pain or whatever the case could be. Father, so many in our world have been hurt by the church, uh, not your side of the church, but the human side of the church. Father, we pray that they would find forgiveness in their hearts and, and openness to your spirit. We pray for those, Lord, today who are struggling with sickness and, and possibly even death in their families. Father, bless them today and may they sit your mercy. Bless those who are struggling to make ends meet and those who are struggling to, to process mentally. There's so many needs, Father. We just pray your touch upon them. We also pray, Lord, that you, that you would help us to, to meet the needs of people around us and that you would get all the glory. Father, thank you for all that you're about to do on this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, there you have it. God loves you. Uh, God didn't promise that this world would be, be great for us once we got saved, but he did promise to go with us. He did promise that his Holy Spirit would walk beside us and that Jesus would intercede at the hand of the Father. Let's count on that today. Let's be encouraged and let's love people no matter how they treat us. Have a great day. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow.